podcasting from a town called Manalapan, New Jersey. This is That Oneness Guy, a podcast covering the many aspects and elements that embody oneness. I am your host, Danny Rongo. As an author, playwright, singer, songwriter, and activist, I am spreading my message of oneness basically to anyone who will listen. So what you're listening here to is episode number one, entitled, What is Oneness? In this episode, I will break down oneness by its definition and touch on some of the many ways that prove our inherent connection as one. So, let's get started. Okay, we've all heard the phrase, we are one. We know what it means. But in honesty, there are as many interpretations as there are as people in the world. So I figured for our purposes here, let's try to break it down as best as we can, okay? If you look up the word oneness in Webster's Dictionary, it's defined as the state of being completely united with someone or something. So whereas we all get this concept of oneness, we all apply it differently based on our beliefs. And in most cases, those beliefs have been part of our being since we were children. Okay, now, to some, oneness may have meant, all right, everyone who shares the same religion as me, or maybe everyone who is the same color, or maybe everyone who speaks the same language. Now, you would think that most people today don't share those kind of views, but because they do seem very, you know, dated to say the least. But if you just look around and watch the news, you can clearly see that there's a very large population of our world that does in fact think along those lines. All right, so that's why I want to restate the definition of oneness again. It says the state of being completely united with someone or something, all right? It doesn't say the state of being partially united. All right, so now we can see that as it pertains to the word oneness, there's some kind of discord, okay? Either we truly don't understand the meaning or we truly don't believe it. So what I want to do here today for this initial episode in podcastville i want to try and break it down further all right so like here's the most simplistic approach and the most definitive way that i came up with all right we know that every single person who is and was ever born to this earth is born a a what a a human being right exactly take everything else out of the equation we're not talking nationality we're not talking where you were born we're not talking the scholar the scholar (laughs) there's a word the color of your skin all right or the language you speak you if you were born you were born a human being okay so now doesn't that alone prove that we are all one obviously it does right we're these beings living here and we're all breathing so we're one so that should settle it right there but let's take it further all right Um, if we are cut, right, do we not all bleed the same blood that is our life source? Of course we do. Another way to prove that we're connected at our core. Let's go even deeper, all right? It's kind of funny. Actually, Andrea, my wife, gets upset when I mention this, but I do it anyway because it makes sense to me. And this is the idea here of this podcast is to try and keep, you know, some form of levity to it. What happens 45 minutes after you eat asparagus and you have to use the facilities? Go ahead, say it, all right? Because it happens to all of us, right? We all get that funky urine odor. Now you're laughing, right? So am I. I'm chuckling here, ha, ha, ha. (laughs) But the point that I'm trying to make is that even though it's kind of funny and odd and stupid, you might say, but that's another aspect that proves we all share that same function if you want to call it that you know we all sense that all right again it proves that we're all connected all right proves that we are all one um now i don't really think it's really even possible to have an honest conversation about oneness and not include anyone's higher source or their god whatever they might call it all right 
I like to use this analogy that I actually first put this out in my musical, the phone call, a musical to inspire one is the first time I started talking about this. I heard my guru, Dr. Dyer, mention this decades ago, and it just always stuck in my head, but it makes so much sense, okay? All right. Imagine your God or whatever you call your higher self, okay, as the ocean, all right? If you go over to it with a bucket, and if you take a bucket of water out of the ocean, all right, let me ask you something. Is the water in the bucket still considered the ocean? Absolutely, right? It's just in a container, but it's still the ocean, right? Obviously, the ocean is still the ocean, but you have part of that ocean in that bucket. Now, same scenario. Just think of yourself as a bucket of your God, all right? All together, you, like your God and you in that bucket, and obviously the ocean would still be God too, all right? I like to use this quote too that I heard years ago. It's only when you stay separated from the ocean that the water dries up. You like that one? I love that one. But that's the point that I'm trying to make there. Just picture and visualize that that setting again. You go to the ocean, you take a bucket, dip it in, and then you pull it away. Again, is the water in the bucket still the ocean? Yes, it is. That's a good way to just drive home the fact that we are just individualized expressions of our one source, but we are in fact one. All right, so why am I making all this fuss to prove that we are one, okay? And I'm not the only person out there touting oneness. I know that, all right? There is plenty of messengers and people who have come before me, but why? Why is it so important, especially nowadays, all right? And the answer to that is very simple. The answer is that because we're killing ourselves, all right? It's not a matter of who's killing who because when you come to terms with oneness, we understand that we're just killing ourselves. I like to go back and also quote some of the Native Americans who said this, you know, obviously quite some time ago, but what they said was, show me any tree on this planet that has branches that strangle other branches. All right, it almost sounds stupid, right? But think about it from this perspective, okay? Because the branches on any given tree know that to exist, that they must coincide. And they coincide because they draw their source or their energy or their nutrients from the same foundation. And, and, in, and in that case, it's what? It's the roots of any given tree, right? But think about it, right? Branches don't strangle other branches. We are the only species that, I mean, like, knowingly and willingly hurts its own kind, and in some cases kills its own kind. So then the next question is again, but why? And the answer to that is simply that because we forgot that we're all one, and we continue to forget that we're all one. You see, we are nothing more than the sum of our collective consciousness that over centuries and over millennia have brought us so far from that inherent truth that we are one and it brought us to this boiling point all right that we now find ourselves in and that's why we keep drifting further and further away from oneness it was really we just forgot that inherent truth and then you tie in stuff like ego and you tie in feelings of separateness and divisiveness. And what happens? We keep drifting further and further away. Make no mistake about it, folks. We are here at this boiling point because of our own doing. Again, we're nothing more. Because if we're all one, then our collective thought is where we are in time. And this is exactly where we are in time. All right? coupled with the attention that the media gives everything, but it's all because of these actions that we're taking against one another. Really, it, you know, I don't know about you, but it, it, it tears me up when I see this stuff, which is why I continue to share my thoughts and my music and my play. And now, speaking of it, my up-and-coming book, which is going to be titled I Am God, 
and so are you, my friends, A, A Common Man's Guide to Oneness, and it's being published by Balboa Press, which is a division of Hay House, and Hay House, as you may or may not know, is the world leader in spiritual publications, so I'm very excited about that, and that should be out, hopefully, I'm hoping for the holiday time coming up to, as, as we get into the holidays and here in 2018. Okay, so now, when I get back to oneness, speaking of messengers that have come before me and, and, that, and that have come before us, I should say, I always like to try and tie in thoughts that maybe other people have said. All right, um, go back all the way. What did what did Jesus say? All right, Jesus said, "Do unto others as you would have them do unto you." Now, what does that scream of? That screams of oneness, right? Exactly. Don't hurt other people, folks. That's all it comes down to. I've always been a um, a fan of some of the early English poets, and probably my all-time favorite was uh, John Donne, who was a 15th century English poet who said, I'm sure many of you know this or remember this, but he said, any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. Now, how poetically beautiful is that, right? Because back in those days when somebody would die, they would ring the town bell so everyone knew that someone had died. Right, but to John Dunn's point, he says, I don't need to wonder for who, you know, who died, because if I hear that bell, I know that a part of me died as well. Here's a beautiful man back 700, 800 years ago was already really preaching oneness as well as Jesus and so many others, right? So what do we need to do? We need to find our way back to remembering that basic inherent truth that we are all one. In fact, you can probably take the word remember and separate it. We need to remember with that source, with our source, because that is what we are. And face it, folks, you know, we're all going to get to a point where we understand it and believe it and try to work at it at some point in our lives. It's just a matter of when. We all do. All right. Again, so we need to remember that we are one and become one again with that concept. We need to take race, religion, and every other aspect that divides us and basically just chuck it out the window because that's all that it's doing. It's keeping us divided. Any preconceived judgments and aspersions that we all have really have no place here in a conversation about oneness. All right? You really have to look at it again. Just remember that we are nothing more than individualized expressions of one source. Call that source whatever you can want to. Call it God. Call it spirit. Call it love. Call it bookcase. It does not matter what you call it. You just know that we all emanate from that one source. Okay? Now, many of you who know me know I always tout the words of my lifetime guru, Dr. Wayne Dyer. And um, we just celebrated the third anniversary of his passing, which was uh, just the other day, I think August 30th. He died in 2015. And I, I studied Dr. Dyer, everything he's ever written since 1976. His first book was Your Erroneous Zones. And uh, I don't know why. I just did. It became uh, an integral part of my life, especially as I started to ask more questions and and wonder more about, you know, why are we and who are we and what is this thing called oneness? But Dr. Dyer was just such a great, great guy. Great, great man. I had the pleasure of meeting him a few times. Andrew and I met him a few times at a couple of uh, his, you know, speaking engagements. But the way he initially at least described oneness is that he looked at it from the word universe he said if you take the word universe and break it down the word uni meaning one and the word verse meaning song so we're all just really one song and we're part of this one song which is our universe and for those who know my music you know that that's the name of my publishing company for my music is uh dr one song and one song because that means a lot to me i know we're part of that one song I wrote a song that I conclude the first chapter of my musical uh, called Simply One Song. And um, 
if you'd like to hear it, please, by all means, go to my website or, or just go to my YouTube page and you can see the video or hear the song right there. So with that said, um, I want to thank you for listening to the podcast. I'm calling that oneness guy. Okay. This has been episode one. What is oneness? I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please take a moment to, sus to subscribe to this feed, either via my website, dannyrongo.com or at iTunes or uh, Stitcher also has this as well too, or at my podcast, which is the courtesy of Buzzsprout and the website there is buzzsprout.com slash 206341. That's the website for this actual podcast. And again, that's uh, buzzsprout.com slash 206341. Again, my name is Danny Rongo. Please look for my new show next week. And as always, I send you peace, love, light, and continued oneness. Be well.